All right, folks, it's 2019. We are deep into the digital age, but yet in the world of high-performance FPV drones, which is essentially a freaking flying robot, we still transmit video on ancient analog systems. Now, it's not that we don't want it. We really do. It just needs to be able to deliver. And we've seen the HD offerings in the past, but for XYZ reasons, it just did not catch on into the FPV community. But today, folks, oh, today, we've got something good because today just might be a game-changing day. In fact, after today, we might not look at FPV the same ever again. Now, if you're new to the channel, my name is Tommy. Let's go take a look at the DJI FPV system. All right, folks, this is what we're gonna do today. We're gonna introduce the DJI FPV system. I'm gonna show you the different components that makes up the system. We're gonna talk about features, specs. We're gonna go out and fly. I'm gonna give you guys my first impressions and we're gonna come back and give you my final thoughts. So let's jump straight into it. All right, folks, it's called the DJI FPV system. Now let's take a closer look at the different components. First up, we've got the goggles. They look kind of crazy. We'll get into this in a second. Then we've got the FPV air unit, which is connected to the FPV camera. And finally, last but not least, we've got the remote controller. All right, now that we know what it is, let's talk about what it does. We're starting off with it's easily the most eye-catching piece, and that's the FPV goggles themselves. Now, at first glance, this definitely looks like that fighter jet-esque look, which looks really good in my opinion. And what you'll notice is it's got vents right up here on the top, and that's because it does have a built-in fan. All right, let's take a look at the bottom because the other thing that's really important with goggles is an IPD adjustment system, and this goggle set is no exception. So you've got the IPD adjustments below, and to the side of that, you've got the barrel connector to power up the system. So there is no onboard battery, but I think that's a good thing because the goggles are a little bit on the heavier side to begin with. So it's probably a good thing that you don't have the, the battery built right in. But it does come with this barrel connector right here and it has an XT60 connector and it is powered by your typical 4S battery. And let's move on to the top here. Well, before I do that, let's talk about these antennas. So it's got four antennas. They are SMA and they are removable so that if you are storing this, they don't get into the way. On top of that, We've got this button, which looks very familiar. It's got that red circle on it, which means it is a stop and start button for recording features, which means this does have onboard recording. It'll do it at 720p up to 120 frames per second. Right below that is the back button, as well as a joystick control. And that's because you're gonna wanna be able to control all the different parameters and settings of the FPV system. And you can do that all with the goggles themselves. Going over to the other side, you've got two more buttons and this is what you're going to use to change your channels. You just reach up to the side of your head, push that button, it's gonna send that signal over to the video transmitter. That video transmitter sends it back to the goggles, they all sync up. All right, so let's talk about what keeps this on your head because this is a little bit on the heftier side, but I think you're gonna be nice and well supported because it's supported on two sides as well up top and it's adjustable via this Velcro system. And on the back, you can see this nice little design that basically distributes the force all around the back of your head for a nice comfortable fit. Now, what's separating the goggles from the face itself is this foam-like material here, which is, wow, that's actually really, that feels really high quality. I wanna say it's memory foam. It's probably not memory foam, but it definitely feels like memory foam. It feels good, folks. Let's just put it that way. All right, finally, on the other side of the goggles, you've got a slot for your memory card. So that way you can, again, record your onboard footage. And to the side of that is the USB Type-C port, and that is really there for firmware updates. All right, guys, so let's move on to the FPV Air Unit itself. Now, when you take a first quick glance at it, you'll come to appreciate the fact that it's actually nice and small. It's not that much bigger than your typical 30 by 30 flight controller and ESC stack, which means you shouldn't have too much trouble fitting this into most FPV drones. On the back, you'll notice that it's got two connectors for antennas. They are MMCX. And then you've got this cable connector right here, which is basically for powering up the system, as well as the UART connection to Betaflight. 
Yes, folks, that's right. It actually connects and talks to beta flight. So big ups to DJI for acknowledging the fact that we need to be able to communicate to what is the most widely used flight controller system on the FPV market. On one side, you'll see that it's got a slot for a micro SD card, and that's because the air unit itself can also record HD video at a resolution of 1080p as high as 60 frames per second. All right guys, so let's move right along. Connected to the FPV air unit is the FPV camera. Now if you take a quick look, and you don't drop it like that, it's pretty much the same size as your micro cam. Now it does have a 150 degree field of view lens on it, so it's nice and wide, and it's also got these three built-in modes. And what that really means is it's got settings optimized for three different flying situations. The first is the standard mode, which is really what you would use for daylight situations, probably what you would use for freestyle. But it also has a racing mode in which they change the settings so that brightly colored objects and obstacles stick out more. And the last mode is an LED light tracks mode. So if you like to do those nighttime LED tracks, that's gonna be the mode that you wanna be in. All right, so these two things put together is basically the unicorn system that we've all been looking for. It's the one camera, one system that'll transmit FPV in HD, by the way, while at the same time recording 1080p HD on board. Basically, no more need for a separate HD camera. All right, so let's move on to the FPV remote controller itself. So if you take a look, it's got this nice, simple, minimalist design, and it's got toggle switches that actually translate back to beta flight so that you can actually control certain settings and modes, which I like. But it also has some features and buttons that can control the settings and parameters of the FPV system itself. So that's what I really like about the system because you don't need a separate receiver. It's built into the FPV air unit, and it's all completely integrated. So you can control everything just right out of the radio itself. Oh, and by the way, did I say that this thing can do four kilometers? This whole system can do four kilometers of range for both video and radio with eight people in the air. That's, that's freaking phenomenal, guys. You know what? Hold up, let me just find something out real quick. Hey Siri, what's four kilometers in miles? Four kilometers is 2.49 miles. 2.49 miles on a digital system that does both the radio and the video on the same link and you can have up to eight people up at the same time. All right guys, I'm getting really excited about all this stuff. Just reading the features and the specs has got me super excited. I think it's time for us to put this into a drone and let's go capture the first impressions. I, I, I wanna know, is it, is it time to switch over my fleet? We're gonna find out here in a second. Let's check it out. All right guys, the custom drone is done. It's running four inch props. We got the FPV camera out front so that we don't have props in view. The VTX is mounted out back. The antenna's in a V-shaped pattern. And what makes this custom drone special is it has these anti-vibration bushings. And really what that's meant to do is separate the vibrations that come out from the motors and props. So that way we're giving this camera system the best possible performance so that I can give you guys my initial thoughts on what's going on here. So it is a really bright day out here, but I think that's gonna be really good because that way we can really put the wide dynamic range to the test of the DJI FPV system. Let's get to it. I'm really stoked. I really wanna see what this HD is all about. First time, let's go. <laughs> okay so i mean guys right off the bat this is like this is like watching like imax theater right here I, I can see every individual blade of grass i could even tell you which blades of grass is dying over the other because there's just so much detail here all right so um let's take off oh i should probably hit the record button which is conveniently located right here so let's hit that. Uh, the on-screen display tells me that I'm recording. Let's go. Wow, just wow. When I say it's like watching IMAX, I am, I am not kidding, guys. And you know what? 
I, I don't feel any latency at all. This feels really, really good. This is on par with anything else you'd find on the FPV market right now. Let's go check out, let's go through these shaded areas. And it was right about this moment where I basically zoned out and completely forgot to keep narrating for you guys. But fellas, the experience is just that good. Now what I was trying to say earlier was that I wanted to fly underneath the tree canopies because I wanted to test the wide dynamic range of the system. And I gotta say it's really good. And it's really important to me because there are situations where you want to fly through a shaded spot, kind of like this, where on analog systems, that could just be a black hole and you can't really see what's on the other side. And so with this system, it really instills a new level of confidence in flying because you are able to see. And what I was telling you earlier about the latency, again, I just want to confirm for sure there is definitely no latency with the system, whether felt through the radio or perceived into the goggles themselves, so that's always a plus. And I gotta say, flying through the HD is just next level stuff. I mean, the amount of detail and data that you are seeing really changes the way that you fly. Partly because, again, you, you just confident about more of the stuff that you're seeing around you. And partly because sometimes you just kinda wanna chill and, and see what's going on. Now keep in mind, this is a 4K video and this goggle view is in 720p. So I'm going to switch over now to the actual onboard footage from the air unit which is in 1080p. And uh, let's go take a listen to the microphone. Alright now as you can hear the mic I mean, it's not the best. I would say that it is somewhere in between what you would hear on something from like, say, the run cam split and uh, the GoPro. So it's not terrible, but it's also not the very best, but it's definitely usable. Now, another thing to show here is, I mean, this wasn't the hardest hit, but I did do another battery afterwards where I crashed a little bit harder. And there was no glitch. There was no white flashing at all during the image transmission in the video goggles and I say that that's pretty important because crashing is definitely not an uncommon thing in this hobby and you definitely want to try and recover and save a crash if you can. So again, just as a reminder, this is 1080p footage from the air unit itself and this video was rendered in 4K. So again, just something to think about and keep in mind as you're looking at this footage. But overall, I'd say this footage is pretty good. So if you are a type of guy where 1080p is plenty enough for you, this is definitely something to consider. I love the fact that everything is integrated. I love the fact that it talks and connects to Betaflight's telemetry system, which means you can not only get all of the important telemetry data such as voltage, but you can also do things like change the PIDs. In short, flying in HD is simply amazing. Now let's talk about the rest of the gear. The radio, really great ergonomics. Even for a pincher like me, I still felt really, really comfortable. The buttons, the switches, the jog dials all felt really positive. And in comparison to other radio systems that I've used, there's something really satisfying about it, which tells you there's some magic sauce going on in terms of quality. And speaking of quality, those gimbals, man, those are some uber smooth gimbals, probably some of the best that I've felt yet. Moving on to the goggles, now although they are slightly on the bulky side, they are still pretty comfortable on the head. And one thing I do gotta mention is for my Asian face, I did have a little bit of light leakage coming in from the sides and maybe in future DJI can offer some different pad options that could take care of that. That said, it wasn't distracting for me. The image was just so amazing that it really wasn't bothering me at all. The OSD layout in the goggles is not cluttered and you have all of the important telemetry data points that you would want when you're flying, so that's also a nice touch. The other thing that I really love is the fact that you can change channels right off the goggles and I discovered that it has this LED panel on the side that lets you and other people around you know what channel you're on. Alright guys, so now let's talk about the cons. Thankfully there's not a whole lot of cons with the system, but there's definitely one that we definitely need to talk about 
and that's signal degradation. So in the couple of packs that I've flown the system, I have been able to push it towards the edge of its range performance to kind of understand that what it does is quite a bit unnerving. So let's compare. In an analog system, noise and static introduces into the system, but the image is still continuous, which means as long as you can make out what's going on in the background, you can still fly out of it. With the digital system, however, it's a little bit different and it happens in steps. The first step is that the image as a whole starts to pixelate or even just a portion of the image starts to pixelate, but things still keep moving. No big deal, you can fly out of it. But the next step is when things start to get a bit hairy because the next thing that happens is that the frames start to freeze. Now that's kind of like flying with like me holding up pictures, right? Or maybe like you're in the dance club and you're just like strobe lighting. It's really, really hard to fly out of that. All up until, of course, the final step, which is just a complete freeze frame, in which case you're definitely going down. So that is definitely something to think about. If you are the type of flyer where you're gonna go at distance, there's gonna be a lot of objects between you and it, maybe this is something that you should hold off on. See, the good thing is it can only get better at this point. In fact, at the time that I flew this, we were flying on the S Bus protocol and DJI did tell me that they're working on their own protocol that's supposed to bring that performance and latency even better down to seven milliseconds. So we can test it then and figure out, is it worthy of freestyle bashing? But if you're just a cruise type of guy, maybe you're not very abusive with your quads and you don't need a whole lot of object penetration between you and your aircraft, then this is definitely something to look at. Now, the one thing that I was kind of teetering back and forth about whether it's the con is the price. What's the cost of the system? Now, at the time that I shot this video, DJI has yet to decide what the cost of the system is gonna be, but I have reason to believe that this is gonna cost considerably more than its analog counterparts. Now, the reason I'm not putting that into a con or in the con list is because in terms of specs, you wouldn't expect an HD TV to cost the same as a standard definition TV. And so I figure this is kind of apples and oranges, but it's definitely something to consider. If you're like me and you just abuse the heck out of your quads, there's a risk versus reward like thought process that goes there because I'm just going to assume that replacing a component from this HD system is going to cost more than replacing its analog counterparts. So to answer the question, am I gonna change my entire fleet? The answer is no, at least not yet, but there's definitely gonna be room for at least one of my quads to have the system on there because flying in HD guys is just, I, you just gotta try it. I mean, half the time I'm, I've got really confident about my flying because there's just so much detail coming in and it gives me a lot of confidence. And then half the time, I'm kind of just wanting to relax and chill because what you would normally sit in awe afterwards, right? When you've done with your flight and you're watching the review of your footage, that's when you sit there and soak it in. But with this system, I'm finding myself doing that as I'm flying. And so for that, I feel like there's just a whole new level of like flying experience to be had with the system. And so that, for that alone, definitely worth checking out. All right guys, that's gonna wrap up this video, but drop it down in the comments. Let me know what you think about this system. What would you use it for? Is this something that you would rock? Once again, my name is Tommy. Don't forget to hit that like button and that subscribe button, especially that subscribe button, because now that I've finished making this first impression video for you guys, now it's time to put this system to its paces. Can it hold up to my kind of abuse? Stay tuned for a future video update, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out. In addition to the fact that changing channels is just pretty much... <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? It's getting hot in here. It's getting hot. Okay, here we go. The goggles is the fact that you can... Bleh. Damn it. Too much Red Bull now. <laughs> As well, but you've got everything... Everything. Everything. <laughs> everything. Everything. Everything.